So you mentioned um, already a little bit about situational awareness and the three components, and I really do like how you break them down. I use them all the time when I'm, when I'm doing training and stuff, which is really perception, comprehension, and projection uh, of the environment. You know, what does that environment mean to you now and, and into the future? Can you give us a, a more background on how organizations can use this situation awareness? Um, again, I'm, from our, our perspective, we're more, we mainly work with the corporations of the world, but you don't really hear corporations talk about this. They're still mainly focused on plan-based, event-based planning, you know, collecting a lot of data, having a lot of decision flows, you know, everything is there, and honestly, sometimes failure or success is determined if you use the plan or not which we know that it's, it's impossible to, to do that in a nonlinear environment. Can you provide some more background on that? Well, planning is very important in organizations. Um, what we find that people do who are really good at this is they don't just make a plan. They make a lot of contingency plans. So they do a, what if, a lot of what-if reasoning. What if this happens, what will I do? What if that happens, what will I do? And they've really thought through a wide variety of events and situations. And that is hugely important, I think, for building success in uh, not only carrying out your plan, but in knowing what to look for, for these kinds of events. So they're not just entertaining the happy path scenario, but they're really thinking about all the possible things that could go wrong. So that, that's hugely important. Um, we have found situation awareness is really important in that process. Um, we've studied planning in, in how people do detailed planning, and they constantly need to be gathering information on what really is the state of their environment. If you're a military commander, it might be what's going on with your troops and enemy operations. But if you're in a business organization, I think there are some analogies there. You really want to understand what's really going on with your operations, what's really going on in the marketplace, what are your competitors doing, and gathering the kind of data you need to really understand uh, what's critical, what's the significance of that, where are the projections going. And that has to be done on an ongoing process. It's not like you do it once and then you're done. You're constantly having to reassess what's going on in that situation and tweak how you're following that plan and how you're adjusting into some of these contingencies that you need to be thinking about as you're working through that operation. Do you consider a plan, and in our industry this has many different, different definitions, so I'm curious of your opinion. You mentioned so basically the plan is a byproduct of planning and what you're saying I believe is you know, a lot of people will focus on the, the scenarios, the what is, which gives them the breadth and the depth of the various scenarios. I change my mental models, helps me uh, frame things. Then I have plans, which are byproducts. But the truth is, the, the, the real thing is, is I'm, I'm updating that context as time evolves. But what is that plan then? Is it a framework? Is it, um, is it details of what you would do? Is it flows? And, just, I'll just give you an example. One of the things that we use is the C2 model, which is understand, visualize, describe, direct, lead, and assess. And so for, for us, we, we have a tendency to, we want organizations to use a framework and then feed in the situational awareness into that framework. How do you, how, in your experience, have framed plans and how are you using them? Well, I think plans are probably done differently by different organizations. Um, but basically, that framework, I think, applies. It's going into the details of what it is you need to be, really be paying attention to in that environment and how to think about what, does, what do these events mean for carrying out your actions and for the kinds of responses and changes you need to make to what's going on. So there's a, a variety of things that are happening there. Um, in these plans, what I find often is organizations aren't necessarily thinking through all the contingencies or they're working on partial information. Uh, and this is particularly important in team operations, where you'll find out that one group knows what's going on. They have a certain perception of the situation, and another group is kind of on a different page. Um, and it, then you don't have very coordinated opportunities. Um, you'll find that uh, the overall decision process is really flawed because all of the information that needed to be in it really wasn't considered. So part of what we do in working with team planning in particular is helping to build a shared picture, a shared understanding of what's going on in the environment um, so that people can understand not just what they're doing, but what are these other groups doing? Where, what is the status of their activities? How is what they're doing affecting me? How is what I'm doing going to affect them? Uh, what are they uh, going to do into the near future so that we can stay synchronized and stay coordinated? And largely, that's where a lot of these operations really have trouble. It's maintaining that common shared understanding of what's going on. Uh, what we, we have a number of principles for that in our book as to how to support this shared situation awareness in these teams, 
and how to really build these common operating pictures, what kind of information really needs to go in that to support those sorts of operations. Um, unfortunately, that term has been overused a bit. A lot of people think it just means a nice graphical picture. Well, that's part of it, but that's certainly not all of it. Um, there's a lot of other parts to that common operating picture that need to be shared, understanding the resources, understanding how those resources are, de are deployed, understanding how we're doing against the timing and against the plans, and the significance of events in people's ability to carry out their parts of the plan. So there's a lot of different aspects that really have to be built into that common operating picture. So in your description, then the situational awareness gets packaged into what they call common operating picture. Is that, is that one way to look at it, or is, are they two separate things? It should be. I think a lot of common operating pictures fall, for, fall far short of that, however. But that's a tool for helping people build that shared situation awareness. Um, they need to often be much more robust than they currently are, and they need to really, I think, be improved. A lot of what I've seen, particularly in uh, critical incident response and emergency management, there's partial data or there's a lot of digging through tons of code or, and, and different pages to try and find out what's going on, that's not really very effective, particularly in an emergency situation. Uh, so what we strive for is really situation awareness at a glance. You should be able to look at a display and tell immediately what's the key information, what's really important, what's changed, what's happening, and how is that affecting me. Um, and that really has to be customized for the individual roles in that operation because everybody needs a slightly different picture. So we really customize those displays in order to meet the different needs of the different roles who are operating in that environment. I like that. When I was reading through your book, I really like how you position that, which is this situational awareness is, is really based on an objective, a task, a, something that, that, is, that you're doing. It's not just general, like the hurricane's coming and it's got this winds and we look at flooding. I mean, that's just, it's, it's, inf it's information, but really at the end of the day, what does it mean to me, my organization, or as you just mentioned, the various uh, decision-making levels, which is, I find very difficult actually uh, to, to, to do that within organizations without having a customized uh, software platform. Yeah, that's hugely important. We go and do our analysis for each individual role because the, the things that are important to you about the situation are really dependent on, on your particular goals, what you're trying to do um, and the decisions you have to make. And that really forms the basis for really understanding the, the basic data, the comprehension and projection needs for that role and, and the data you have to put into that display. So if you're an incident commander, for example, you're going to have one set of roles and you're going to need a certain set of information. If you're a, a response uh, commander on the ground, your, your information needs are going to be slightly different. If you're the logistics person, your needs are going to be slightly different. If you're a medical officer, your needs are going to be slightly different. So those that information really has to be customized based on the, the goals and decisions of those users. And do you, uh, just made me think of this, do you, are you selling software or is it you have to go in and customize the existing softwares to fit situational awareness? Yeah, I, I wish we could just say, here's the perfect tool, buy this, it would be wonderful. But, but the fact is that really doesn't work. Um, it really has to be customized for those individual information needs of the particular users. Now we've done this process with a lot of different kinds of organizations. So for the Army, for example, in command and control, we did 110 different user roles. We went through and did the analysis and design uh, and measurement in order to design the system. We've done it for power grid operators. We've done it in oil and gas drilling. We've done it in um, mining. We've done it in a lot of different operations for a lot of different kinds of individuals where we could really customize these information displays.